and the head of the chemistry department for Harvard, uh, was indicted and arrested for spying for the Chinese. Part of what he was doing was not reporting $50,000 a month that he was receiving for China while he was still getting grants from the United States government to work on classified programs. Uh, this is one of those things where the Chinese have taken a, a huge advantage and, and made very deep inroads into uh, our, our university system and our research institute system. And those two things are closely interrelated as, as, uh, as uh, industries. And uh, we've seen just in the last uh, few months or you know, year or so, the FBI has really bumped up its efforts, counterintelligence efforts, to start to fight back against this. And it's just come out in the press. We've mentioned it in a previous interview that 50, more than 50 people have either been directly fired or essentially forced to, to quit because of their ties back to China. And as you correctly stated, Chinese citizens are required by Chinese law to spy for China if asked to do so. That's part of the legal system they have there. So they have no right to refuse, which is not the same for Americans, and I am assuming Canadians, and most of the rest of the West. You're not required by law to spy for your intelligence agency of your respective countries. So in this bill, this is a very interesting thing because uh, for one, one thing, uh, clearly the Democrats recognize this is a weakness. Now, they've been very cooperative as a rule with China and so are, are, are kind of averse to doing anything that you know, is critical or, or uh, acting back against China. So clearly they view this as a weakness. And the reason I say that is because the, the bill that is now being floated uh, by the Senate is bipartisan. So that's a, that's a big deal. And what they're uh, uh, trying to do is crack down on... Uh, you know, this theft of intellectual property. The bill is called the Safeguarding American Innovation Act. And uh, that's going to be something that will strengthen State Department. Now, uh, it's going to, <coughs> excuse me, allow them to deny visas. And also, it really toughens up the reporting that's required uh, for two things. One, anyone getting paid by the Chinese uh, or foreigners. And also, gifts to the university from foreigners, particularly China. And this is one of the things that, that I've repeatedly pointed out as a, a perfect example of why this is such a problem. In all of the COVID-19 reporting, we've seen China spin this every way they can to cover their culpability in this whole thing. And one of the things that they've done is they've used universities where they've given huge gifts and have people on the board of directors or board of regents, whatever they're called at these, these universities or institutes, those are the ones coming out criticizing other people's research on COVID-19, saying it's fantasy, it's, you know, it's, it's crazy theories, it's tinfoil hat stuff, all of that. But that's directed by China to have them put that stuff out. So we now we know we just basically, you know, I think everyone recognizes on COVID-19 we're not getting all of the truth ever. And a lot of people are kind of lying and manipulating for all of the different reasons out there. So there, and even within the different groups within the uh, Institute of Health and the so-called experts on COVID, they're, they're always at odds over all the details. So we know, we know we don't know what's going on for a fact. So uh, this bill is, is hopefully going to help a great deal on kind of fighting back on the propaganda aspect of what we're seeing coming out of of, uh, of China.